Hi guys, and welcome back to CFOP Cubing. Today, I'm gonna to show you how a three x three Rubik's Cube actually works and how the actual hardware is able to make these little pieces move around the cube without falling apart. So to figure out how the Rubik's Cube actually works, we're going to have to start with the core of the puzzle. This piece is called the core as it's the core of the puzzle. It's actually quite small and it holds all of these pieces together. The way it works, is it has six screws like this, holding six center pieces on six different sides. The head of the screw holds the center piece on. Now the six center pieces actually hold the rest of the cube together, and this is where the magic comes in. An edge piece goes in between two center pieces like this. They can't pull out because the centers are holding them in. At 45 degrees, they won't be able to come out because there's gonna be another edge holding them in like this, so they can't come out. Now we also need corners. 3x3 three three corners are designed to perfectly fit three edges like this. On each of the sides, they just fit perfectly. They can slide around like this. Now if we just use the cube like this, it's so loose and loud. Just one flick, just so many turns. It's very, very, very unstable. So we are gonna have to tighten it. Now this is just the tightest it can be without the layers just being glued to each other. It... I don't know if I like it more or less. It's very, very stiff. The corner cutting is just terrible. We won't even corner cut this. Now what can we do to make this better? We need something to put the pressure on the layers, but just not to make it too hard. That's where springs come in. The springs go right in here and they go in between the center and the screw head. It pulls the center piece down this way towards the cube, but it's not so hard, so you can pull it back. Now with springs, the cube is just so much better. There's pressure on all the layers to make it pretty stable, but it's still flexible, and the layers can kind of pull apart from each other. You may want to make the springs tighter or looser though. You can just replace the springs with a different type of springs, but there are spring compression systems that compress the springs to make the spring act like a stronger or weaker spring. There are lots of spring compression systems, but I'm going to explain it to you using the popular MoU compression system. There's a blue cup that the spring fits inside like this and puts pressure on that instead of the centerpiece. Now when it's all in place, you can use this little tool and when you put it in little notches like this and twist it around, it actually raises the cup and then that compresses the spring even more. The little cup has these little notches here. I don't know if you can see them. And they basically click into the centerpiece on these little notches. And when it twists around, it raises the cup, which as you can see, compresses the spring. This makes a little bit more of a stable feel. Once you get to the highest setting, and once you do it one more time, it'll go back down to the lowest setting. Cubing manufacturers have used springs for many, many years, but only very recently, a new interesting system just came out that replaces springs entirely. This system is maglev, which is short for magnet levitation. There are only three cubes that have this system, and I don't have one of them, so I'm just gonna try and explain it to you. There are two magnets in each centerpiece that go in the screw where the springs used to go. They go on in a way that makes them repel each other. This makes them act just like springs. So how does this help? Well, I have actually no idea. The only thing that I can think of is that it gets rid of the spring noise. The spring noise is just caused by the friction of the screw head and the spring. It sounds kind of like this. I guess it also helps reduce the friction of the screw and the spring, but I don't think it's worth the higher price. The difference is so small. The main reason that I think that people are actually buying this is because it's just a new thing that sounds kind of futuristic. I don't know how long it will last though. Speaking of magnets, let me explain to you the most popular use for magnets on a 3x3 three by, three by far. Magnets are used to keep the layers of Rubik's Cubes aligned. Like this, you can kind of see it kind of snaps into place. They go in between the edge and the corner and they just stay together. Another thing that cubing manufacturers are figuring out is different places to put magnets, which I will get into in a second. So magnets help by aligning layers, but different people like different strengths of magnets. Some people like their magnets to click into place, while others don't like it being so hard to turn, and they like it a little bit weaker. 
Sometimes cubing stores have magnets that are pretty weak, but then you can buy extra magnets that snap on like that, and it just increases the strength. Still, some more expensive cubes have magnet adjustment systems that allow you to change the strength of the magnet easily. Usually, they work by moving the magnet closer and farther away from the piece as you turn. There are other places to put magnets, like in between the center and the edge, but there is a magnet placement that GAN figured out, which made the GAN 11M Pro super popular, and now many cubes are being re-released with the same magnet placement. It's between the corner and the core, you can see here. The reason why this is so amazing is because on normal magnets, the cube only snaps into place right when it's on the right spot. But now with the corner to core magnets, it starts aligning the layer all the way when it's out here. Now with the GAN 12 maglev, not only does it have the really cool maglev feature, but it also has really long corner to core magnets on the corners, so it starts pulling the layer to be aligned when it's even further out. One more thing that makes any Rubik's cube much better is by applying lube. There is lots of different kinds of lubrication. Some lubrication makes the cube faster, some slower, some gummier or drier, but basically lube just makes the cube turn better. I know that's kind of straying from the topic of 3x3 mechanics, but it's just another thing that makes 3x3 hardware much better, or any type of Rubik's cube, almost. Wait, maybe if I just, and that is pretty much it. That's how Rubik's cube mechanics work for the 3x3. If you want to learn how to take one of these things apart, and then, then just check out this video right here. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe to help me out, and I will see you next time.